What did Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and retired world champion heavyweight boxer Mike Tyson have in common? Both famous. You're powerful and rich. One's the boxer and one's monarchy. I don't really know otherwise. Tyson and the Queen share a passion, a passion that I share with them. For a sport with a worldwide following and a glorious history dating back 2,000 years. A sport in which hundreds of thousands of dollars and even millions in prize money are awarded in international competitions. Man, millions of dollars? Where do I sign up? <laughs> You're not talking about boxing, are you? No, I'm not talking about boxing. I'm talking about pigeon racing. More like rats in the sky. My name is Greg Cartwright. My passion right now, it's, it's my wife and my grandkids and this, this place we've been building for the last eight years. Both Pam and I love animals. We have horses here, which are her number one passion. She's an equestrian rider, but we're both involved in racing pigeons. My name is Pam Gordy and I am a veterinarian. I'm married to Greg. I didn't know at the time that he had ever been involved with pigeons and when he decided that he wanted to get back into it, uh, it was very uh, exciting for me. I would say I was um, about seven or eight years old when I had my very first pigeon encounter. I loved animals since I can remember. I remember visiting a neighbor who had uh, racing pigeons. I would spend hours just sitting on the fence watching those pigeons, and uh, that's when it all started. I obviously started with Greg when he got his first pigeons two years ago. I would have to say I don't believe that I match Greg with, the, with respect to the passion. I'm more the science end of it, organizational, getting things done, and he's the passionate one. I think people generally see pigeons as a nuisance. What they see are the wild pigeons that breed in the wild, that tend to accumulate in the cities. But racing pigeons are different. Racing pigeons are like comparing a wild dog to a prize show dog. They've been bred down to the generations to be able to, in fact, race way beyond the abilities of a wild pigeon. I know absolutely nothing about pigeon racing. Pigeon racers? Pigeons race? I didn't even think it was such a thing. Like, uh, they're flying, right? They're not running, right? Pigeon racing, essentially it's releasing birds from a distance of anywhere from 200 to 1,000 kilometers. The distances are calculated as the uh, uh, average speed per yard. The yards are measured from the release point to the owner's loft. The race is determined by the first bird winning, coming home. But you know your training has been perfect when they're coming in immediately, and that's really exciting. Now, there are different methods of racing. The natural method is just to keep the birds separate and race them as single birds. But we're flying, which most of the world does now, uh, on a system called widowhood. And that's a system where both the hen and the cock, or either, is taken away from the nest, and so there's an added incentive to return. I think the secret to a pigeon racer and his birds is uh, probably fivefold. Um, first, I would say it's the loft and its environment. Secondly, I would, I would say it's uh, nutrition and food. Thirdly, it's maintenance of their health training, and lastly, the, the, the pigeon fancier or owner himself. The birds can come to love an owner, and uh, I have been trying to spend as much time as I can with them because once they see that love and trust, 
they're more likely to come home or race home because it's a, a very secure environment for them. When we train a racing pigeon, we expose him to the topography of the land. So he's using his photoattic memory to memorize his location. A pigeon can actually sense the magnetic field of the earth. And by using that, that also enhances his homing ability. So generally with young birds, we teach them to train back to the loft by going increasingly further with tossing. Tossing a racing pigeon is just a, a term for training them by releasing them from a basket. So we'll start tossing from you know, a mile away and we'll probably double that every day to the point where the birds are very comfortable being released from a distance of 20 to 30 miles. What we're trying to do when we select for genetics is you look at the cock and the hen and you try and find common ancestors that have traits that are specifically useful, for example, distance. So if you are trying to breed a distance bird, you want to find genetic lines that have distance on both the cock and the hen side and match them. If you're trying to do speed, then you do the opposite. Pigeon racing is really a sport that's been around three or 4,000 years. The Greeks and Romans used them to send messages. It wasn't until probably the early 1800s that breeders in Europe started to notice uh, a pigeon's ability and through the process of careful selection and breeding, began to breed families of racing pigeons uh, in Europe, particularly in the countries of Holland, Belgium, and Germany, and developed all of those skills to the point where racing pigeons became a vital military tool. They were used in almost all wars throughout history. They could cross enemy lines carrying secret messages. And there's all kinds of stories of famous racing pigeons who saved hundreds of lives in both world wars. The sport of pigeon racing is most popular today in Europe, and it's in particular in Belgium. It is the national sport there. It's a huge sport today in, in China, and it's really the Chinese today that are making the sport as big as horse racing. There are statistics as to how many racing pigeon uh, fanciers there are in Canada. I believe it's going to be in the tens of thousands. Uh, certainly in the United States, it's going to be in the hundreds of thousands. People getting involved in the sport of racing pigeon are gonna learn a lot of things. They're gonna learn what it takes to raise successful baby birds, keep them healthy. But I think most of all, they're gonna be in touch with helping a living animal grow and be healthy. And that, I think, is important for kids to get involved with. When you start to breed and to race a racing pigeon, you start to see things you wouldn't normally see. Different personalities, different traits in their raising of baby pigeons. You start to see really amazing things which are very similar to personalities of people. You get attached to a racing pigeon, and in particular certain racing pigeons that are very tame, but will come up to your shoulder and sit on you and nibble on your ear. And uh, the closer you are, the greater that emotional attachment is. I learned to love the birds. I love watching them. I've been motivated to find out more about them from a veterinary point of view. And my passion has grown substantially since I first was introduced. I think the sport of racing pigeons has enhanced my own personal development in the sense that I'm bettering myself in the sport. But perhaps what I've most enjoyed most is I'm having something in common with my wife, who's an avian vet. And for both of us to participate in the sport, it's exciting. And it, I think it, it helps our relationship as a couple. The closer you get to the racing pigeon, the more you understand just how intelligent and how strong uh, a performer that bird can be. Once people learn the difference between a wild flying rat that you'll see in the wild and a purebred racing pigeon that has been developed over the centuries, it's an amazing difference.